Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we are playing with Razor Blades. We are doing an unboxing and overview video of some new Zotac video cards using the new GM204 GPU on NVIDIA's GTX 980 SKU. Now technically I have a few 970s here and a few 980s here already. We're doing some pretty cool testing with that coming up shortly, but today we are specifically looking at the Extreme Series 980 that is in Zotac's new AMP lineup. And the reason we're doing that is because uh, I spoke about them at Game 24. There's another video, check the sidebar or the channel or one of these buttons on YouTube. And uh, we talked about the Omega 970 and briefly overviewed the Extreme 970. When I did that video at Game 24, we did not yet have an Extreme Series card in person and in theory that is what is in this box unless this is a huge joke being played on me i have already test super clocked versus non super clocked with evga it is on the channel it was not impressive so we're gonna go for a trial number two and see if this thing is heavy and see if uh a pre-overclocked card is actually worth the money over the stock card over the reference cooler, over the reference clock provided by NVIDIA to these manufacturers. So, we've got two of these. I'm just going to take one out because this is heavy and nerd arms were not built for lifting. So, <laughs> despite all of the Don Snow memes that you all constantly make in all the videos. So this is the 980 Extreme by Zotac. And a quick overview, it is, in, it is a 1298 megahertz clock, I believe, looking at the back of the box here. I think it's 1298 megahertz for the core clock, and that is over the stock reference clock by NVIDIA of about 1126 megahertz for the GTX 980. So that's somewhere in the 165 to 170 megahertz range for an OC. Not bad, really. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, you can definitely do more as an end user. I'm not sure if these are binned out better or not. I'll ask Zotac, and we'll talk about that in the full review coming up shortly. But... It's about 170 megahertz overclock. Will that impact your gaming? Well, with EVGA and superclocking for the 750 Ti and 750 Ti SC, all other specs identical, not a big difference. But this is a much different game with a uh, GPU like this. It's tremendously more powerful than the 750 Ti, so an overclock could potentially have nonlinear gain over what we saw with the 750 Ti, which was the earliest possible Maxwell GPU. and was quite different in architecture than, than the ones used in the 980 and the 970. So that's what we've got. Let me just pull this out of the box here and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the video. This card, oh, this is heavy. This card is, um, it uses a different cooler. It's got three fans on it. The central fan is for intake and differently from what I have seen before or seen regularly before, the outer two fans are for exhaust. So pretty nice box there. Uh, very fancy if you are a fan of boxes. I have a lot of them. We have cropped them out of the shot. Um, typical pack of probably CD and warranty information. Yep, I didn't actually look, but that is definitely what's in there. And then we've got the video card, which is the only thing any of us actually care about. Pull that out here. And this thing is a monster. I believe it takes two and a half slots. It is a big video card. You're going to potentially have trouble SLI in it. Do keep that in mind. Uh, I'll mention that in the full review and let you know if you can do it or not. So we've got a back plate here as per NVIDIA's design standard issue now, but it's modified. Everything is modified. This is a non-reference board. I should also mention that this video card in particular has two eight pin pinouts on the board, whereas the standard design suggests only two six pin pinouts because stock, it is about 165 watts TDP stock, meaning NVIDIA's reference design. And with Zotax, it was approaching 180 watts, getting up there anyway. So that's why uh, they have these extra pins so you can actually power that and so you can overclock more heavily if overclocking is your thing. After I test it, in theory, this would be able to provide the power required for that. The 980 Extreme also has an LED up here that turns red or green based on use. You will see that in my next video. Red being more intensive use, normally 3D gaming. Green being sort of idle and things like that. Now, 
Uh, normally your video card mounts like this with the LED facing down. This was something pointed out by Nick Blackwell who is an awesome case modder. You should check him out if you have not. And he's a friend of mine. He pointed out that the LED is facing down and suggested that the LED in the future perhaps be installed in the back plate. Now that would be pretty cool. I'd love to see it, but not today. But what I can tell you just by looking at this without taking it apart, that we've got, as I said, intake fan, exhaust, exhaust. What happens here is uh, Zotac is expecting, and I, I know this because the EVGA has had issues with this in the past, they're expecting that if you have all these as intake, it's not really going to do a whole lot more because you're going to run into issues with the air sort of getting trapped in there and having no way out. So this pushes it in with one fan centrally, hits the GPU. Uh, I believe the VRM is over here, and so is the DRAM. The DRAM is somewhere in, in this uh, area where the card sticks up a bit more. So what's happening, air goes in here, it gets pulled by both of these fans, and then spit out all sides of the card, and out the back, of course, out the back of the case. And that should exhaust hot air faster. We will see in testing how well that works. Uh, the whole card has kind of a carbon fiber gunmetal look to it, which is sort of cool. Definitely, um, definitely got a bit of a 1980s cartoon robot look, which is what I will say for the T-word, so I don't have to say it, because it might have some kind of YouTube infringement attached to it. So 1980s cartoon robot look, that's what we've got going on here. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it, I'll be honest, but uh, it doesn't really matter, because if you're buying the card, it's up to you. So you take a look, you decide if you're a fan, you let me know in the comments below what you think of the aesthetic. So that's the video card. Power boost on here is based, these are just caps on top of solid capacitors. These are just uh, branding caps. And it, yeah, they'll tell you that they'll help keep the capacitors cool. Is that for reals? I, I don't really know. It's That's probably a non-issue in general, but uh, they do use solid caps. I know that for sure. So should get a bit more life out of it. The OC Plus tool is actually a sort of cool uh, micro USB just like you would use for your phone connector you plug that into your motherboard using a micro USB to USB connector which they provide and then you can look directly through uh, Zotac's what they call fire strike software and see your OC performance check your voltage levels and all that in real time in theory uh, a bit more directly and accurately than if you're using something like hardware monitor afterburner things like that so, that is Zotac's new 980 Extreme video card in the AMP series. It's about 165, 170 megahertz overclock on the core clock. It's 177 megahertz overclock on boost. Has the standard issue, 4 gigabytes of video RAM on board here, GDDR5, of course, with the 256-bit memory interface as issued with the GPU by NVIDIA. None of that's really changed, just the clocks. I should mention it has a 190 megahertz memory clock OC, so it's going from 7010 megahertz effective to 7200 megahertz. Pretty big jump. So between the core OC, boost OC, and memory OC, we've got some testing to do. I'll have fun overclocking this. We'll let you know how it works. Uh, please comment and tell me what you think of the design because I'm curious, and we will see you all next time. Peace.